Jesse here with the Humble Fungus. It's a cold and dark Tuesday here in Colorado, but uh, I've been actually doing a lot of auger work recently and genetic culture work, and I get a lot of questions, and they're great questions. Uh, I get questions about recipes, sterilization times, but um, a lot of the questions that I get are kind of coming into the middle of the actual question, right? And so what I mean by that is, let's uh, start this series on auger, liquid cultures, and culture work. Uh, let's start with the basics, right? What are we talking about? When we talk about making auger plates, what we're talking about is creating a um, nutrient jello, for lack of a better term, that we can inoculate with um, fungal spores, tissue culture, uh, tissue transfers, um, other mycelium, etc. Right? Biology and other sciences have been doing uh, petri dishes and auger plates and things like that for hundred, like hundreds of years. And so none of this is new, and you can find a lot of this information on the internet. But why? So a fungus at its earliest stage, right, or actually in its entire life cycle. Um, when you start from spores, spores are inert and they have to germinate, uh, kind of like plant seeds. Uh, and so that germination takes time. And the more time it takes for a fungus to take hold and grow, the more likely contamination is, right? So you want something that'll, that creates an environment that allows the fungus to grow as quickly as you possibly can get it to grow. Auger is used by biology labs to grow everything from E. coli to mycelium to all sorts of things. But fungi. Fungi want two things, carbon and nitrogen. Carbon is basically plant material, right? It's lignin, cellulose, hemicellulose, it's all got a bit of carbon in it. Not a lot of things like eating carbon. Bacteria, protists, uh, fungi, and other things like eating carbon. But a fungi's primary job in nature is to break down, hard to break down organic carbon materials and other things and return that energy and those nutri nutrients to the rest of the environment around them. So, carbon. Nitrogen. Now, if you've ever grown plants, you've probably given them plant food. A large component of most plant foods is nitrogen. If you've ever grown plants at scale or you've run a farm or anything else like that, you're probably familiar with this, NPK, right? Nitrogen, phosphorus, and uh, potassium, right? This, these are the basic building blocks of plant life. Now what's interesting is this. If you have plants on the right hand side and you've got fungi over here, right? You can see that the potassium and phosphorus may not be as useful to the fungus as the rest of the plants. But that's probably a talk for a different day. Let's get past that. So carbon and nitrogen, what does this mean? It means that a fungus wants something to chew on, right? It wants its food source and it needs something to break that food source down. That brings us to auger. Auger, auger plates are usually made of two things. Auger, auger powder. And, and a nutrition source. So, newts, right? And water, right? That's all auger is, right? And that's actually what, like, if you cut out the auger auger powder, that's all LC is, new to water. So what this does, auger auger is made from seaweed, um, and it's basically just nutritionist jello. Uh, the newts can be anything, right? As long as they have the right sugars and nitrogen to kickstart the metabolism of the or rather the enzyme stomach. 
So, that's the basic recipe. Agar agar powder needs water. That's it. So, let's go over a basic recipe real fast. So, carbon, nitrogen, agar agar, nudes, water. A basic recipe just to make agar would be one liter water. Now, water. Let's talk about water. The water you have in your tap is got a bunch of chemicals in it. It's got chloride, it's got uh, chlorine, it's got all sorts of other crap in it. So this water that you get from your tap isn't going to be clean. There are multiple debates around this. Um, given that you're going to be sterilizing this, all living life in that water should be dead. But the extra minerals, nutrients, and chemicals aren't something you necessarily want to bring to the uh, table all the time. So generally speaking, we recommend using distilled water. Now, if you can't go and buy distilled water, what you can do is actually just take water from your tap, boil it, and then cool it. Right? Make sure you cover it up so that it's sealed, and then cool it. At that point, that water is now sterile, distilled, etc. Everything should be boiled off, taken care of. So you start with one liter water. This is a media bottle. This is a porous, borosilicate glass bottle. Um, and it's temperature safe. Uh, usually won't explode unless you're dumb like me. <coughs> Comes with a cap. You don't have to use a media bottle. You could use a mason jar or any other glass vessel. You want to use glass because auger auger powder or auger auger and the water and everything is going to be molten. It's going to be volcanic as you're cooking it and as you're sterilizing it and even as you're uh, pulling it out of the pressure cooker. So you need something extremely temperature resistant. So stick with glass. So glass, one liter water into that jar. Now auger auger. For recipes, there are two schools of thought, or rather there's not two schools of thought, there's multiple ways of approaching this. You've got high nutrition, new mixes, and you've got low. The difference between these two is high nutrition means that you're going to put more nutrition than auger auger powder. Why? Because the higher the nutrition, the faster and potentially more aggressive the growth of the fungus. However, the higher the nutrition, the higher the risk of contamination taking hold just as fast. So, that's where you get low nutrition, where you add more other other nutrition, right? And in a low nutrition environment, most molds and contaminants are going to take, have a lot harder of time taking hold. Meanwhile, the fungus is going to figure that shit out and just move on, right? So the fungus is going to sit there and it's going to go into that low nutrition environment, unlock those nutritions and grow. Now it's going to be slow growing, but it's enough to slow the contamination down that you can actually get a healthy sample. Cool. So a high nutrition mix would be, a high nutrition mix would be 15 grams agar agar powder. and then uh, 20 grams nutrition, right? So one liter of water, 15 grams of water, water, 20 grams of nutrition. In a low nutrition plate, you may use 20 grams of water, water, that's high, this is low, 20 grams of water, water, to uh, 15 grams, minutes. You see what I did there? I just moved five grams from bucket A to bucket B. That's it, right? Everything is still balanced. But, nutritionless, nutrition rich. So, that's your basic recipe. That's your basic mix, um, and almost all of your recipes are just plays and mutations off of that. So, I'm going to end this video with your basic malt extract auger recipe, right?
And this is super easy, right? Remember, you're gonna start with one liter water, ideally distilled, or RO. Then you're gonna add 15 grains, audio powder, and then 20 grains of light malt extract. LME. LME is usually a powder. You can find it in brew stores, you can find it on Amazon. Be warned, all of your nutrition sources that you're working with here are super sticky. So just remember that. So just to recap, auger is used to incubate and otherwise grow out cultures. These could be fungal, bacterial, or something else. Sometimes when you want to grow a fungal culture, you instead grow a bacterial culture, and everyone gets sad. It happens to all of us. But auger auger or uh, auger plates and auger mediums are really just vessels that we use to grow out our fungi. And all they really need is some carbon and nitrogen, nutrition, an inert thing to grow on, water and nutrition. So your basic auger plate recipe using just plain old malt extract is gonna be one liter water, 15 grams auger auger, and 20 grams light malt extract. That's your recipe. Now what you do is you put that all in a bottle, ideally with a stir bar, shake it real hard and mix it real well, put it in your pressure cooker, and you sterilize this for 20 minutes at 15 PSI. 16 PSI if you're above 10,000 feet in elevation. And done. So, hopefully that helps. Next video, we're gonna cover even more recipes. And also, antibiotic algorithm. I'll see you soon.